So then, now we've connected to the database and we need to start interacting with it to add documents, then retrieve them and also update them as well. And we'll be doing that all from inside our route handler functions. But the first step is to create a schema and a model for our data so that we can be sure that every document that we have and we save to a database collection follows the same predictable structure. The kind of data we'll be using is workout data or exercise data. So we wanna make a schema and a model for that. So to do that, we'll create a models folder, first of all, and then inside that, I'm gonna make a workout.js file. And then in this file, we can define how our workout documents should look. So the first thing we need to do inside here is again, require mongoose. So let's say const mongoose is equal to a require, and we want the mongoose package because it's mongoose that allows us to create these models and schemas for our data in the database. MongoDB alone is schemaless, all right? So now we need to create a new schema, but first we'll say const schema, capital S, is equal to mongoose dot schema, right? And we're gonna use this now, which is a function to create a new schema. So let's say const workout schema since we're creating workout documents is equal to a new schema like so and invoke it and this creates a new schema for us now we pass in as an argument an object where we define this schema so what does our data look like what should a typical workout object or document look like well it should have a title property so we add a title property to the schema and then this can be an object where we define bits of information about how the title property should look. So for example, we can add a type property in here to say that it should be a string. So if we try to save a new workout document to the database where the title isn't a string, it's a number, then it's not gonna allow us to do that. It enforces this schema. We can also say that we want this to be required by using a required property and setting it equal to true, all right? Now we can go deeper into this, but for now, this will be fine. So that's the title property. And then we're gonna have a reps property to say the number of repetitions that we did this exercise. And the type of this is gonna be a number and required is also gonna be true, okay? So again, if we added in, I don't know, a reps property which was a string like ABC or something, then it's not gonna allow us to save that to the database because this must be a number. All right, so next up, we want the load, and that's gonna be a number as well. So we'll say type number, and then down here, we'll set required to be true as well, okay? And that's all the properties that I want for now on each workout document, all right? So we have a title, reps, and load, and all of these things are required. So if we try to save a new workout document where one of these fields is missing, then again, it's not gonna allow us to do that. It enforces this schema for us, which is nice. Now, as a second argument to this new schema thing right here, the first argument describes how the object looks. As a second argument, I'm gonna pass through another object, which is gonna have a timestamps property. And I'm gonna set this equal to true. And what that does is when we try to create a new document, it automatically adds a created at property for us to say when the document was created, which is nice. And also I think it adds an updated property as well. So when it was last updated. So that's our schema, pretty simple, right? And now what we need to do is make a model based on the schema. So the schema defines the structure of a particular document or a type of document inside our database, what a model does is apply that schema to a particular model. And then we use the model to interact with a collection of that name. So let me write this out first of all, and then I'll explain it. I'm gonna say module.export first because we want to export the model. And then we say that's equal to mongoose.model to create a new model. We give this model a name. So I'm gonna call it workout singular because then it's gonna pluralize this to create a workouts collection for us automatically, which is nice. And then as a second argument to this, we pass in the schema, workout schema, right? So this creates us a model now, which we're gonna import in other files later on. And we'd import it as something like workout, right? And then we'd use that workout model to interact with the workouts collection. 
because it automatically creates a collection for us based on this name. It pluralizes this and builds that collection in the database for us. So we'd say something like workout, and then if we wanted to get them all, then we'd say dot find, and that would find all of the workouts within the workouts collection for us. Or if we wanted to add one, we use a different method. So this is what we use the methods on, the model itself, the schema, defines the structure of the documents that we save to that collection. Hope that makes sense. It's going to make more sense in the future when we start to use this model to do things like add new data or get data. And in fact, we'll just do a test of this straight away inside the routes file. So go to workouts.js right here. And what we'll do is we'll just fill out this handler right here to add in a new workout. So remember, this is a post request, and when we send a post request, we'll send out the data that we want to create a document with. So we'd send the title, we'd send the reps property, and we'd send the load property, and because we used this middleware before, express.json, all of that request body that comes along with the request is going to be passed onto the request object so we can use it. So I'm going to grab all of those three properties from the request body. So I'll say const, and we'll use a bit of destructuring. We'll say title, load, and reps was the other one. We set that equal to request.body, okay? So we'll send these along with the request later when we try this out from Postman. But now we're extracting them, and what we want to do is we want to try to create a new workout document inside the workouts collection. And like I said, we're going to be using the workouts model to do that. So we need to import it at the top up here, first of all. So let me come under express and say const workout is equal to require. And it's going to be dot dot forward slash models forward slash workout model like so, because that's the name Oops, is it models? Okay, this is just called workout. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call this workout model. So let me rename this, call it workout model like so. And in fact, we'll change this to be just lowercase like so. So now we have this workout model and we can use that to try and add a new document to the workouts collection. So the way we're going to do this is by using a try and catch block because we're going to try to do something, but there might be an error. And if there is an error, we can catch that error and do something with the error. So let's do that. Catch error like so. All right. So ignore this for now. We're going to replace that later on. What do we want to try and do? Well, we want to try to create a new workout. So we'll say const workout is equal to workout with a capital W. That's what we just imported, the workout model. And then we use a method on that called dot create. Now, this is asynchronous right here. So what I'm going to do is change this handler function to be an asynchronous function. So I can say async like so. And when we do that, we can use a wait right here. So basically now we're storing the response of this in this thing. And normally when we create a new document, once that's been created, the response we get is the new document that was just created along with the ID of that document. So we're storing that inside this workout constant now. Now inside this create method right here, we have to pass through an object which represents the new document that we want to create. Now we just want to pass through for now these three properties, the title, load and reps. So I can say title, load and reps. All right. And it's just going to create a new document now for us with those three properties. Okay. So once it's done, we have that workout object and that represents the document that was just created. And what we can do is send a response. So I can say response. We'll tack on a status code as well of 200 just to say everything was okay. Then we'll send back some JSON and the JSON we're going to send back is just the workout object right here or the workout document that we got back. All right, so that's all we need to do right here. If there is an error, we catch the error right here. And what we'll do is return some kind of error message. So I'll say response.status right here, set it to be 400, which is an error code. And then we'll send back some JSON. And the JSON we wanna send back is an object with an error message. And the message is gonna be the error that we get back right here. So error.message, because it has a message property on it. Okay. 
and now we can get rid of this response down here because the responses are up here. We either respond with this to work out if it was a success or an error if it wasn't. And that's all there is to it. We're using our workout model now to create a new document, all right? So let's give this a whirl, open up your terminal, make sure this is running and there's no errors, there's not, cool. And let's head over to Postman. All right then, so in Postman, we wanna open up our post request right here. And we want to add body to the post request. This is the data we're sending along with it. Now, right here, you wanna to go to raw and then change this to JSON because we're sending raw JSON, right? Okay, so remember, we need those three properties sending along. The title, first of all, which we'll just say is gonna be sit-ups. That's the title of the exercise. Then we'll also send a load, which is a number, and that's gonna be zero since we're just doing sit-ups. And then also the number of reps, and we'll set that equal to something like 50. Okay, so now if we send this post request, then it should look at this, and it should add that new document based on this, and we should receive that document back as a response. So let's press send and see if this works. And you can see we get a status code of 200 and also this document back right here. So it has these three properties on it, but also an ID that is provided by MongoDB and also these timestamps created at and updated at. All right, so it's created that document for us, awesome. Now then, watch what happens if I get rid of one of these fields. So if I just send along a post request with two fields and press send, then we're gonna get an error response back. Workout validation failed, and it says that reps is required. So remember that model we created? It said that the reps property, and in fact, all the properties were required. So it's not allowing us to create a document unless we have that required property, which is cool. So we know that that kind of mongoose validation is working as well. And finally, my friends, I just wanted to come to the MongoDB website where we can see our database. And I wanted to browse the collections to make sure that that document was saved. So if I click on that, we can see down here, we have a workout collection that was created for us automatically when we tried to make a new workout document. And inside that, we can see a single document, which is awesome, so it's worked. And it's not saved that second one where it didn't pass the schema validation. So everything's working now. We have everything up and running. Next, I wanna talk about something called controllers.